Let's stand up and let's pray, get right in the Word of God here. I'd like a little bit more monitor, a little more volume on my monitor, please. Thank you. Dear Father in heaven, as we bow before you today, we thank you for the wonderful living Word of God. I make it known that I'm not trusting or depending on limited human abilities to teach, but I am trusting in you. And therefore, I know without doubt that you anoint my mind, that I might grasp revelation that will rise in abundance from my heart within. Thank you for supernatural recall of the Scripture. And I believe that your word will flow from my mouth smoothly, accurately, clearly, without hindrance from anything, carried by your power and your spirit to each and every person's mind and the sound of my voice, bringing understanding, removing confusion, that you will enter every heart, bringing faith, removing all fear in Jesus' name. And we'll give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory for all that's revealed and accomplished through your word and by your spirit here today in Jesus' name. Praise God. You may be seated. Uh, sound engineers can have a little more monitor, please. Thank you. All right. Well, as I said in that little video we just saw, a lot of craziness going on in our world around us. We have to deal with all sorts of problems today that we didn't have to deal with 20 years ago. Financial problems, uh, disease, infection, virus problems, health issues. And uh, we really have to know God's plan for our lives and follow His plan and um, build our life on the Word, the rock. Jesus said in Matthew 7, verse 24, that those who hear the Word of God and do it are the ones that build their life on the rock. And when the storms of life come, the house will not be shaken. But those who do not build their life on the rock, in other words, they don't hear the Word and do the Word, they are building, they hear the Word only and don't live by it. They are building their life on the sand. And when the storms of life come, it'll knock their house down. Jesus talking about our life, family. Say this, the Word of God is the only sure protection against every adversity that comes our way in all of life. Praise God. All right, so we're now listening to part four in our series as we wrap it up on divine healing. And this part is the B part of ministering healing to others. How to minister God's healing to other people. That's what we're here for today. All right. Now, until we know what God's will is, until we know what God says about a subject, there's nothing to base our faith on. There's nothing to base our faith on until we know. Because faith for receiving God's blessings comes by knowing and acting on the Word of God. Amen? Amen. All right, go to Romans 10, 17, a verse we all know very well. It says, faith comes by hearing God's Word. Say that, please. Faith comes by hearing God's Word. So as we listen to the Word of God here this morning, faith is coming to your heart. Amen? Now go to Galatians 3, 5. It says, therefore, he who supplies the Spirit to you, God who gives us the Holy Spirit, and works miracles among you, God who works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law? Does God provide the Holy Spirit and work miracles among us by obeying the Ten Commandments? Or does he do it by hearing faith? By hearing faith. Well, we just heard right there, faith comes by hearing the Word of God. Obviously, God is telling us that the miracles happen in our life because of listening 
to faith. Listening, feeding on faith. That's what we're doing here this morning, family. We are feeding our hearts with faith. So this, I'm listening to the Word of God, and I am eating faith food. Praise God. All right, now let's go to Romans 12, verse 2. Romans 12, verse 2. It says, Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be changed by the renewing of your mind. Once we know God's will on a subject, or on the subject of divine healing, then our mind is renewed in that area. So that once I know what God says about divine healing, my mind is renewed to that subject. All right? Now, that means we start thinking correctly about the subject, because we now we're thinking in line with God's thinking. The renewed mind makes steadfast faith possible. Say that. The renewed mind makes steadfast faith possible. Until a person who is seeking healing is sure from God's Word that it is God's will to heal him, again, until the person seeking healing is sure from God's Word that it is God's will, to, God's will to heal him, he is trying to reap a harvest where there is no seed planted. Now, anybody that knows anything about planting seeds and growing vegetables will tell you, you can't expect your cabbages to grow, your carrots to grow, if you don't plant any seed. And likewise, we can't expect to be healed if we don't know what God says about healing. Amen? You're trying to reap a harvest where there's no seed planted. John 8, 31. Jesus said, if you abide in my word, that means read my word, meditate in my word. If, if you abide in my word, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Praise God. Amen? So knowing the word of God brings deliverance and healing, just knowing it. Now, I... I've prayed for thousands of people through the years and seen God heal them, but I have much more success in preaching them healed, in teaching them free. Because when the Word comes into the heart of the believer, then they can stand on their own against sickness. Amen? Amen. I have prayed for folks who don't understand the Word of God. They've been healed, and they go out, and two, three days later, the devil puts it back on them, and they accept it. They accept it. Oh, I thought I was healed. Or, or it's come back. Because they don't know the Word of God. They don't know they are healed, because God said it. And they don't say, I resist you, devil. I'm staying, hell. I'm staying well, because I'm healed. God said I am. That settles it. I resist that pain. I resist that problem. I'm not accepting it back. Because they don't know the Word of God, they can't stay free. So, by knowing the truth, one can stay free. Psalm 107, verse 2. God sent His Word and healed them. Now, hold up your Bible. Hold up your Bible and say, God sent me this Word to heal me. Now, say, the Word of God is divine medicine. Amen. So, as you listen today, family, you are receiving divine medicine. It is in knowing God's Word that healing comes. It's in knowing God's Word that freedom comes. For one to say, I believe the Lord is able to heal me, before he knows from God's Word that God is willing to heal him, again, for one to say, I believe the Lord is able to heal me, before he knows from God's Word that God is willing to heal him, as I said, it's like a farmer saying, I believe God is able to give me a harvest without planting any seed. We must know 
what the benefits of Calvary are before we can appropriate the blessings and benefits. There are many Christians who say, pray for me. But what they should be saying is, teach me God's Word first so I can have faith for my recovery. You got it? They shouldn't be saying, pray for me. They should be saying, teach me God's Word first so I have faith for my recovery. Amen. Amen. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20 will bear that out. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. So God is saying, my son, that's talking to you and me, give attention to my words. That means give the Word of God first place. Make it a priority. Give it your full attention. Okay? Incline your ear to my sayings. That means listen to the Word of God. Do not let the Word of God depart from your eyes. That means read the Word of God. Do not let it depart. Keep the Word in the midst of your heart. So how do I keep the Word in the midst of my heart? You see, it didn't say in the midst of your head. Keep the Word in the midst of your heart. So how do I do that? Well, if I give it my attention, I listen to it, I look at it, that's what happens. It goes into the heart. Amen? Now then, it says in verse 22, For my words are life to those who find them, and health to all their flesh. How do I find the Word? When I have it in my heart, I found it. So the Word of God is life to those who find them, and health to all their flesh, not some all of the flesh, life and health. So notice God's instruction here. The Word of God cannot be health to my body until, number one, I hear it. It cannot be health to my body until, number two, I receive it into my heart. It cannot be health to my body, number three, unless I act upon the Word. Act upon the Word. Amen? Amen? From time to time through the years, uh, folks have come to me in challenges that we faced in the ministry and said, what are we going to do now? And I said, you know what we're going to do? We're just going to act like the Bible's true. <laughs> and is it true? Yeah. Well, then let's just act like it is and stop panicking. Hello? Yeah. Amen? Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Say this, my battle, my battle. is the Lord's. the Lord's. Praise God. It does not matter what kind of unhealthy flesh the person has. It could be cancerous flesh, goiters, tumors, blood disease, skin disease, blind eyes, deaf ears, lame legs. It doesn't matter what it is. The Word of God is life and health to all flesh. Amen. Hallelujah. 1 Peter 2. 1, 23. 1 Peter 1, 23. God's Word is incorruptible seed. Say that. God's Word is incorruptible seed. What does that mean? Well, the word incorruptible means it cannot fail. Cannot fail. Will always work. Amen? If it's corruptible, it means it's subject to failure. Now, God's Word is incorruptible seed. Just think about that. Dogs have seeds, and they produce more dogs. Cats have seeds that produce more cats. Birds have seeds that produce more birds. Peach trees and peaches have seeds that produce more peaches. Mangoes have seeds that produce more mangoes. Everything has a seed. As long as the earth remains, Seed time and harvest will continue to exist. God said that, right? So God created everything with a seed inside of it. And now say this, every seed produces after its kind. So if you want carrots, you plant carrot seed, right? You're not going to plant cabbages if you want carrot seed, uh, carrots, right? Because everything, every seed produces after its own kind, right? So dogs produce dogs. Men have seeds. And men produce children in this world, humans. God has a seed. It just said right here, 
God has a seed. God's Word is incorruptible seed. Hold your Bible up and say this. This book is filled with God's seed. Now, remember, every seed produces off its own kind, right? So when you hear the gospel of salvation from the Word of God, and you receive that into your heart, then God's seed comes in and produces His life, produces Christ in you. So Christ is born in you, and now it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ is born in you. The life of God brought Christ to be born inside of you. Now His nature is seen through you. His power is seen through you. His wisdom is seen through you. Because Christ is living His life through you. How did that happen? When you received the seed of God, the life of God is in His seed. And God came in through His seed. You got it? So what happens then if you listen to healing seed? Then God's health comes in and produces God's health in your life. What happens if you listen to prosperity seed from the Word of God? Well, then, then God's prosperity and anointing comes on you to prosper. That's why I teach a little bit uh, before we receive every offering to let some, some prosperity seed go into the hearts of the believers so the believers can prosper with divine prosperity from divine seed, right? Okay, now then, in other words, it will always produce a harvest. And Jesus said in Matthew 13, 23, He who has received, he who received seed, seed, that's God's word, on the good ground, that's talking about the heart of the believer. So this, my heart is like soil. Whatever goes in will germinate and produce a harvest. Both good seed and bad seed. Now, he, is, uh, he who received seed, God's seed, on the good ground, so I'm good ground, is he who hears the Word of God and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and produces some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. So whatever seed you allow to go in will produce a harvest thirty, sixty, a hundredfold. Hallelujah. So, Sam, listen to God's Word now. The seed is going into my heart. Life, healing, anointing to minister to others is flowing into me from God's seed. I am receiving it. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, while we hear God's Word and keep God's Word in our hearts and act on God's Word, the incorruptible seed is in good ground and will bring forth a harvest. It will bring forth a harvest. Amen? Amen. We're going to act like it's true. When the farmer plants his seed in the ground, he does not dig it up every day. See how the carrot's growing. Let me dig up my carrot seed today. Oh, I can't wait. I'm dig it up. Oh, yeah. Huh, no change yet. Puts the carrot seed back in the ground. No farmer does that. Amen? He plants the carrot seed. He walks away saying, oh, I'm glad that's done now. And the seed is doing its job. It's growing. Amen? The seed is doing its job. It's growing. Praise the Lord. So let us have the same faith in the imperishable, the imperishable seed of God. If the farmer can trust the carrot seed to grow, he doesn't have to look at, dig it up every day to see if it's growing. He'll come and look and wait for the shoots to come out the ground. He doesn't dig it up every day because he knows it's growing. If the farmer can have that much confidence in a seed that could fail, it's not incorruptible seed, should we not have the same confidence in God's seed, the Word of God? Will we meditate on it? By Jesus' stripes, I am healed. Should we not have the same confidence that's in my heart? It's growing. It's producing divine health in me. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We cannot grow corn 
if we plant the seed that produces weeds. You cannot grow corn if you plant seed that produces weeds. When our eyes are upon our symptoms, and our mind is occupied only with thoughts of doubt and fear and failure, then I'm planting bad seed. I'm planting weeds in my heart. When I plant seeds of doubt and failure, I cannot grow a crop of health and success. Can I do it? Got that? Say that. If I meditate, think about all day long my problems, my symptoms, my doubts, my fears, I am planting seed that will produce weeds in my life. Well, somebody said, I can't help it. I'm just, I just keep thinking of these fears that I've got. All right, let's try this little exercise. I'd like you all to work with me here, okay? I'm going to ask you to count from 1 to 10 in your mind, in your mind. Not loud, loud, don't open your mouth, from 1 to 10. You ready? Go. Did it? Good. Now, the second test is this. I want you to count from 1 to 10 in your mind. Again, not yet, I'll tell you when. And then while you're counting along the way, I'm going to say, speak out aloud your name. Fred Bloggs, Joseph, Mary Lou, whatever it is, say it out aloud. You don't have to scream it. Just say it so you can hear it. You got it? Now, you need to work with me here. Don't sit there like a bump on a log. <laughs> say it. You got it? Okay. I'm counting from one. <laughs> I'm going to tell you to count from one to ten, and then I'm going to say, say your name. You ready? Count. Say your name. Yeah. What happened to the counting? Stopped. Stopped. Say this. When I speak the word from my mouth, my words will always dominate my thoughts. So, take out the scriptures you need. The answers to your problems that cause your fears. Find scriptures, the antidotes in the Bible. Okay? Take those scriptures out, put them on a card, and when the devil tries to put these thoughts in your mind, you just read out those scriptures. Out loud. You laugh at the devil. Amen? He's defeated, family. Amen. He's got nothing, nothing except deception. Don't listen to him. Jesus beat him for us. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Romans 5, 12. Therefore, through one man's sin entered the world, and death through sin. Therefore, through one man's sin entered the world, and death through sin. So because of Adam's sin when he ate the forbidden fruit, death entered the world. And that sin that brought the death brought sickness. Brought sickness. There was no sickness in the Garden of Eden until Adam sinned. There was no death until Adam sinned. Jesus Christ bore all our problems on the cross, which we received as a result of our sin. Okay, so there's a lot of problems in our world today because of man's sin. Seriously, right? And Jesus bore all the problems. The Bible tells us in Galatians 3.13, but Christ has rescued us from the curse pronounced by the law. When he hung on the cross, he took upon himself the curse for our wrongdoing. What's that talking about? Well, if you read the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, there's a list in that chapter of all the curses that come upon us for disobeying the Ten Commandments. Okay? The list continues to tell us all about the different sicknesses that there are, 
that come upon folks who disobey the Ten Commandments, and all the financial woes and death, spiritual death, separation from God who is love. So that's the condition of those who don't know Christ. That's their state. The Bible says, but Christ rescued us from the curse. We should all be under that curse, pronounced by the law. When he hung on the cross, Christ took upon himself the curse for our wrongdoing. So when Christ hung on the cross, he swallowed up all those curses for every person ever born and was alive and going to live. He swallowed up all those curses in himself and it killed him. He died on the cross because of it and went to hell in our place for three days. And by so doing, he set us all free. Set us all free. The Bible said, Christ rescued us from this curse. He rescued us, delivered us. It's not our curse anymore. He said, I'm free. Say it again, I'm free from the curse of wrongdoing because of Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Mark chapter 2, verse 1. Now, <clears throat> Mark 2, verse 1. Several days later, Jesus returned to Capernaum, and the news of his arrival spread quickly through the town. Soon the house where he was staying was so packed with visitors that there wasn't room for one more person, not even outside the door. And he preached God's word to them. Four men, one, two, three, four, arrived carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. Say paralyzed man. <laughs> Say couldn't move, right? It's paralyzed. Four men arrived carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. They couldn't get to Jesus through the crowd. So they dug a hole through the roof above his head. And they lowered the sick man on his mat right down in front of Jesus. So they must have tied four ropes to this mat, stretcher, bed, whatever it was. And they lowered him down in front of Jesus. Dug a hole in the roof, put him down there. A big hole to get him down. I wouldn't like that if somebody did that to my house. <laughs> Anyhow, but now watch this, verse 5. Seeing their faith, seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralyzed man, My son, your sins are forgiven. My son, your sins are forgiven. Isn't that interesting? It didn't look like he needed forgiveness. It looked like he needed healing. Hello. Are you out there? So, he says, um, my son, your sins are forgiven. Why do you say that? Seeing their faith. Seeing their faith. Not his faith only. Their faith. So, there's four guys plus the man on the stretcher. All had faith that Jesus was going to heal this man. They all believed it. Otherwise, one of them would have said, hey, I'm not going to take, take him uh, to Jesus. That's just crazy. He's not, nothing's going to happen to him. I'm out. Then three guys would have carried the mat, tried. But no, they all believed that he's going to be healed. The man coming down on the mat must have believed it too. Otherwise, he just said, hey guys, you're wasting your time. This is crazy. I'm not doing this. But he did. So Jesus said, seeing their faith. So now, I can't look into the heart of somebody and see their faith. But their actions display their faith. Because they're acting in line with the Word. When you act upon the Word, everybody can see you're a believer in the Word. So, they're coming down to receive His healing. He says, my son, your sins are forgiven you because He saw the man's faith. So immediately, they were forgiven for their sins. All of them. Because they believed in Jesus. Isn't that amazing? Jesus, they didn't say, Lord, we for, please, re we repent. The four guys on the roof, the guy on the stretcher, we repent, forgive us for our sins. They never said that. But Jesus forgave them for their sins because they believed in him. All of them, all five. 
forgiven for their sins just because they were believers in Jesus. Say that. They were forgiven for their sins just because they believed in Jesus. You got it? Okay, now watch. But some of the teachers of religious law who were sitting there and said to themselves, What? This is blasphemy. Who but God can forgive sins? Who but God can forgive sins? Jesus knew what they were discussing among themselves, so he said to them, Why do you think this is blasphemy? Is it easier? Now watch verse 9. Very important. Is it easier to say the paralyzed, to the paralyzed man, is it easier to say to the paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven, or get up, pick up your mat, and walk? Hmm. Which is easier to say. In other words, there's no difference to say be healed, or you are forgiven. If you are forgiven, you should be healed. If you are healed, <laughs> you should be forgiven. <laughs> because they're both purchased at the same time, on the cross by the same person. Amen. Got it? Yeah. Now, watch this. Verse 10. Jesus said to the Pharisees, I'll prove to you that I, the Son of Man, have the authority on earth to forgive sins. I'll prove to you that I, the Son of Man, have authority on earth to forgive sins. Then Jesus turned to the paralyzed man and said, Stand up, take your mat, and go home. Because you are healed. Because you are healed. The man jumped up, took the mat, pushed his way through the stunning onlookers. And then they all praised God. Never seen anything like this before, they exclaimed. So, watch verse 11 again. Go back there on the screen. Stand up, take your mat, and go home because you are healed. Huh. So he said to the, to, the, to the Pharisees, I'll prove to you that I can forgive sins. Get up, you're healed. In other words, because he was forgiven, he had the right to be healed. Again, say that. Because he was forgiven, he had the right to be healed. Now I say it this way. If he weren't forgiven, he wouldn't be healed. Again, if he wasn't forgiven, he wouldn't be healed. But because he believes in Jesus, he could be healed. And he is healed. Because Jesus said, you are forgiven. In other words, go home. But <laughs> they lay, he just lay there. But nevertheless, the point is, when you are forgiven, you are automatically healed. You just didn't know it. So that when I got forgiven... Because I believe in Jesus, I was automatically healed. I just didn't know it. Just like that man. He lay on the bed. Jesus said, you are forgiven. He could have got up and gone home. But he didn't know it. He didn't know he was healed. So he lay there. And that's the problem with so many Christians today. They don't realize that they're forgiven, therefore they're healed. They just stay in their sickness. But this man stayed there. Then Jesus said, get up and go. He could have still said, okay now, Lord, you saw them letting me down here. I can't get up. Come pray for me first. Then I can get up and go home. He never did that. He just got up. And the power of God, the minute the he tried to move his little finger, the first part of his body they tried to move, the power of God hit him. It went right through him. And instantly he got up and walked out, carrying his mat. Like a normal man. Why? Because he acted on the Word of God. He acted on the Word of God. He could have stayed on his mat and said, pray for me first. What would have happened then? He would have stayed sick. Stayed paralyzed. But he acted. Well, God said, I'm healed. Jesus said, I'm healed. So I'm going. And got up. See that? Just like the ten lepers that came to Jesus and said, Lord, uh, we got leprosy. So she said, okay, I want you to go to the priest and get your certificate for your cleansing. What's that mean? Well, in those days, the lepers would have to go to the priest 
And the priest will give him a letter and say, oh, I've examined you, you're clean, you can go back in public. Without that letter, they get stoned to death, they're not allowed to be in public. So Jesus, they said, Lord, we got leprosy, all ten of us. So Jesus said, okay, fine, go to the priest and get a letter for your cleansing. Go get a letter, let him examine you and give you a letter say so you're healed from leprosy. They could have said, well, pray for us first, Lord. They won't give us a letter unless we're healed. But you know what they did? They just left. On their way, I'm going, I'm going to get my letter. But look at you, full of leprosy. That doesn't matter, I'm going to get my letter. <laughs> Jesus said, I'm just going to get my letter. And along the way, they were healed. And so one man comes back, falls before the Lord on his face and says, thank you, Jesus. So Jesus said, where, where are the other nine? Why don't they come say thank you too? But they didn't. They didn't. Jesus wants us to say thank you. You see, where are the other nine? Can't they come say thank you? Unfortunately, only 10% of people are grateful. Hello. That's a sad story. Okay. Did you learn something from that? Romans 3.22. This righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. So this God's righteousness comes to people who believe in Jesus. So that God's righteousness is mine because I believe in Jesus. Just because I believe in Him, I'm righteous. It says God's righteousness. This righteousness from God, it doesn't come from a bullfrog, from a bird, a cat, a wild animal, even an angel. No, it's God's righteousness. Now I say this, I am righteous with God's righteousness. Therefore, I am as righteous as God is. Hmm. I know that makes some people's brains tilt. Can't handle that. Say it again, I am as righteous as God is. It's a gift from God. I didn't work for it. I didn't deserve it. Jesus bought it for me and gave it to me as a gift. Praise God. So say this, because I believe in Jesus, I'm righteous. And therefore, just like the man on the, on the stretcher, I can walk out well. I'm healed because I am righteous. I'm forgiven. Praise God. Praise Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give the Lord some praise. All right. Colossians 1.21. Colossians 1.21. You were God's enemies before you got saved, separated from God by your evil thoughts and actions. Yet now, after you accepted Christ as Savior, yet now He has brought you, Jesus has brought you back as his friends. He has done this through his death on the cross in his own body. As a result, Christ has brought you into the very presence of God. So this because of Jesus, I can now stand in the very presence of God. And look at the next part of the verse. And you are holy and blameless as you stand before God without a single fault. Wow. Said that I'm holy and blameless as I stand before God without a single fault. Say this is the power of the blood of Jesus. That's what he has done for me. Mr. Devil, you cannot condemn me anymore. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. I stand before God. Say it again. I stand before God, Amen. holy and blameless, holy and without a single fault. Now, you know, it doesn't end there. The next verse is remarkable. It says, but you must continue to believe this truth and stand in it firmly. God is saying, now, I want you to believe this truth and stand in it firmly. Don't the devil steal that from you? 
Don't let him lie to you, child of God. That's what I'm talking about. Do we understand how much God loves us? Do we understand? So I'm forgiven, I'm forgiven because I believe in Jesus. So make sure there are no doubters in the room when you pray for a person. When you come to pray for somebody, and um, let's say you go to a hospital room and there's five people there around the bed, you're going to have to say to the man you're going to pray for, what's going to happen to you when I pray for you now? And they're going to say, well, praise God, I'm going to be healed right now. I'll receive my healing when you lay hands on me. Well, then you know, hey, there's faith there, right? Now you say to Joseph, now Joseph, what's going to happen when I pray for Fred over here? Oh, um, well, I don't know. I just don't know. I just hope he gets healed. Okay. Mary Lou, what's going to happen to Fred when I pray for him here? Well, you know, we'll see. Seeing is believing. <laughs> we heard about that already, right? Okay. Okay, fine. And then, Joseph, what's going to happen to Fred here when I pray for him? Oh, well, you know, um, the doctor said he's going to die. The doctor knows, right? We'll see. Show me what you got, Fossil Theo. Show me what you got. <laughs> That's when you say, listen, I want all of you guys, step out the room, please. Close the door behind you. Now, Jesus did that, right? Sometimes he said, all the doubt is out the room, close the door. You read in the, in the, in the book of Acts, in the, in the uh, Gospels. So don't let the doubt of the unbelievers and the unbelieving people Unbelievers, but other, the unbelieving believers, <laughs> don't, don't let their doubt mess you up when you come to pray. Because it will drag your faith down. All right? Don't let them do it. Now, when you pray for babies, you need their cooperation. Very often I've tried to lay hands on a little child, and they cooperate with me. They like it. They're fine. You can pray for them. Sometimes little babies push your hand away, Right? They, then they cry. They just feel uncomfortable, somebody else touching them. I understand that. So you can't pray for a child in that situation. They're not going to receive anything. What we need to do then is pray over a cloth. It must be a cloth that is made from cotton or silk or natural fiber. It must not be nylon or rayon or some synthetic material. The power of God will go into the natural cloth You'll see that in Acts chapter 19. And then when that's put on the baby, and the mother says, put on the baby's skin. And when the mother says, at home, I receive the power of God from the cloth into my child to heal my child. The power will flow, and the child will be healed. Now you can see that in Acts chapter 19. Paul the apostle put his hands on cloths. They took the cloth away wherever they travel to, to their sick friend, put the cloth on the sick person, and the Bible said, they didn't pray, put on the sick person, the Bible said, they were healed, and demons came out. Yeah. Those that had demons, the demons came out. Why? Because the anointing breaks the yoke. Yeah. I've walked past people in the line, sometimes they have demons, they fall out and the power starts screaming, I didn't even pray for them. Because the demon senses and feels the power of God and he can't take it. So when the demon's screaming like that and going crazy, it's because he's blowing his cover. He's afraid. You understand that? Don't be afraid of the demon's afraid. It's like some person, my wife, sometimes I walk in the room, she's not expecting me, and she goes, ah! <laughs> she gets such a bad fright, I get a fright. <laughs> So she goes, ah, God. <laughs> I'm kidding. It's not that bad, but still, I'm trying to communicate the point. So some people, the demon goes, ah, and then the, person, the preacher goes, ah. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> when the devil's blowing his cover, when the devil's freaking out, you know he's defeated now. He's on the run. 
Tell him to leave. Okay. So before you pray for somebody, always make sure then that they understand what the Word of God says. So take them through this little book. If you don't have it, we've got some more, right, Dean? Where's Dean? Business manager. Is that the door? Okay, you can take one each if you can have one. Take a few if you want. If you're going to go out praying for folks. And also this book has got all the healing scriptures in it you need. And it's available in the bookstore right over there at half price this weekend. All right, so I recommend you go through those teaching notes with folks before you pray for them. And uh, make sure that they know what God says about healing. And then ask the person, as I said, when I lay hands on you, will you receive your healing? Always do that. And after praying for the person, let's just assume that they're healed now. After praying for somebody and they got healed, the symptoms are all gone, pain's all gone, whatever. Then you must tell them clearly, say this. If Satan tries to put that back on you two, three, four days down the road, if you feel that same pain came back, come, come back on you, you speak to that pain. And you say, pain, I resist you. I will not let you into my body. Let's say the pain came back. I resist you. I will not let you into my body. God said I'm healed. I am healed. And I'm staying healed. I resist you in Jesus' name. And you can find a friend and say, praise God, three days ago, I received my healing. I'm healed. Praise God. I've had folks do that. I've told them to do it. Then they phone me and say, you know what? The amazing thing is the pain left and I put the phone down. They got back their healing. Got back their healing. All right. So I say that. According to God's word, I'm healed and I resist sickness. So let's just say after praying for the person that the symptoms have not gone, what do you do? Don't throw in a towel. You tell the person, continue reading the Scriptures. Continue reading the Scriptures. And continue to praise God. Father, I thank you. Your word is true. You said by Jesus Christ I'm healed. And I praise you I am healed because you said it. I'm praising you for your word. I'm not praising you to get healed because I am already healed. You said I am, so I'm praising you because you said I am and I am. You got it? I'm not trying to get something that God really gave me. All right? So they've got to go between praise and meditation. Praise and meditation. Praise and meditation. I like to praise God while I'm lying in bed. When I'm closing my eyes, I just say to Him, Father, I love you, I worship you, in my mind. Father, I love you and I worship you, I praise you. I love you and I worship you and I praise you. Whenever I'm alone, I do that. Whenever I'm alone. I'm driving my car. I'm alone. Father, I love you. I praise you and I worship you. I'm sitting in the aircraft. Thank you, Father. I love you. I praise you and I worship you. I just, just in my mind, I'm just telling God I love him and I worship him. Now, when you do that, the anointing of God stays on you, see? The anointing of God, the presence of God stays upon you. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's develop that good habit. Now, we're going to put up our shield of faith as I close the series off here now. We're going to put up our shield of faith. The Bible tells us in Ephesians 6, 17, that the shield of faith will quench every fiery dart of the devil. That means every attack, every arrow the devil shoots at you, your shield of faith will stop every attack of Satan. Every problem of life, every problem of life, your shield of faith will stop everything. It, dead in its tracks. You got it? Your shield of faith. Well, let's put that shield up right now. This is how you do it. You ready? Say this. Psalm 91, Psalm 91. verse 7. A thousand may fall at my side. And ten thousand at my right hand. But it shall not come near me. Psalm 91, verse 10. No evil shall befall me. No plague come near my dwelling. For God has given His angels charge over me and my home and my children to keep me in all of my ways. 
Now I say this, put up your shield of faith, say it out loud. Isaiah 54, Isaiah 54. verse 17. Verse no, weapon no weapon formed against me, formed against me. Shall, prosper. shall prosper. Every attack Every of, of the devil, none of it none will succeed will in hurting me. Hurting. No, weapon, no weapon, no weapon no formed weapon. against me against shall prosper. prosper. Now when problems come your way, you just put up your hand and say, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And that shield of faith will quench every fiery dart of the wicked one. Will quench every fiery dart of the wicked one. And I assure you right now, when everything else fails in life, the Word of God will never fail you. Amen. Amen. Say this, the Word of God today, in my life, in my heart, is like Noah's ark to Noah. Amen? Amen? Well, I sure hope that you were blessed by this series. I sure hope it's helped you. I'm going to say, I believe it has. Amen? Amen? And now what we're going to do, I'm going to lay hands on everybody who wants to receive this anointing. The Spirit of God has anointed me, as I said to you before, in part two it is, I think, there are seven ways you can minister healing to somebody. And the first five ways include faith from the person who is receiving. The, the sixth way is by the gifts of the Holy Spirit. He can minister as He wills. He can heal people freely through you. And the seventh way you can receive healing is from somebody who is anointed with healing anointing. Now, the healing anointing is on my life. It has been for many, many years. In fact, my first year of salvation as a baby Christian... And in the church I attended, three different preachers came through that church that year, and each one of them pointed at me and said, son, stand up. I was 23 years old, and said, son, stand up. God is anointing you with a healing and, delivering anoint healing and deliverance anointing. Three different preachers pointed to me and said that to me. And uh, at the time, I didn't understand the full complexity of what that meant, but Obviously, through the years, you can see it. God's healing anointing on me. But as I've taught you from the Word of God, Acts chapter 1, verse 8, Jesus said, you should see power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you to be a witness, to demonstrate that Christ is alive from the dead. That's the difference between Christianity and all other religions, is that the anointing of God on you will demonstrate the miracles and the power of and the resurrection of Christ through your life. Amen? Amen? So we can talk and demonstrate. Preach and demonstrate. All right? You ready for that? So if you want this anointing, here's a condition. God's not going to give it to you just to sit like a bump on a log and do nothing with it. If you are, listen carefully now, if you are prepared, willing, to pray for somebody that needs prayer when God opens a door for you. When God opens a door and somebody says, I'm sick or I have this. Will you say, I will pray for you whenever you're ready. Whenever you're ready, I'll pray for you. And the person says, okay, come on over and let's pray. Then you go over and you teach them from the Bible and pray. So, if you're not prepared to do that, if you're not prepared to go through the open door, God's not going to give this to you. And He knows your heart. So if you are willing to pray for people when they ask you to pray for them, you can come right now and receive this anointing. In the front. Put your toes up against the platform. Come up here with me, Ben. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He loves us so much, child of God. God is so good. 
We serve a wonderful Lord. We serve a wonderful Lord. Now, all of you that are going to come up here for this anointing, would you kindly just stand up wherever you may be if you are going to come for this anointing. And then I'm going to invite you to say this little confession now so I don't have to keep doing it. All right? You ready? If you're going to come up for prayer to receive this anointing, this is not for healing. But, okay, but, you know, like the woman with the issue of blood in Mark chapter 5, she said, if I could just touch his clothes, I shall be healed. You can do that. You can say, I'm going to receive my healing at the same time. You can do that. That's up to you. But I'm not praying specifically for healing here now. I'm praying for an impartation of healing anointing, delivering, deliverance anointing, casting demons out anointing. Okay. So, if that's what you're coming for now, I'd like everybody that's going to come up for prayer to say this. Say, in the name of Jesus, when Apostle Thea and Dr. Bev lay hands on me, I shall receive a healing anointing, a deliverance anointing. This anointing of the Holy Spirit, this work of the Holy Spirit will be imparted to me, come upon me, and I will use it whenever the Lord opens the door to bring glory to His name. I will receive this anointing, and I promise to pray for those who ask for prayer. That's my covenant. Praise God with the Lord. Now I thank Him. So I'm receiving this anointing. Thank you, Lord. I receive it today. I receive it today. Now, Father God, as Bev and I pray for your children, I thank you, Lord, that every hungry heart will be satisfied. Every thirsty heart will be satisfied. Your anointing will come upon them in Jesus' name. Receive in Jesus' name. Receive in Jesus' name. Receive in Jesus' name. And don't resist the anointing. Don't resist the anointing. Receive in Jesus' name. Receive. Receive God's love and presence. Receive. He loves you. He loves you. Receive. There it is. Receive in the name of Jesus. Receive in the name of Jesus. Receive in Jesus' name. Receive in Jesus' name. Receive in Jesus' name. Receive now in the name of Jesus. Receive right now in the name of Jesus. Receive, there it is. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you. Don't fight it, just yield. There it is. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you. The anointing of God. There it is. There it is. There it is. The anointing of God, like fire burning in your hands now, from now on. In the name of Jesus. There it is. When you lay hands on the sick, that fire will come. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now, after this is done, I'm going to invite folks up who want to pray for the sick to come up, if you want to, in the service, that is. If you want to pray for somebody in the service. And then I will invite you to pray, and I'll coach you, make sure that everything goes right, and they will be healed. They will be healed when you pray for them right now. All right. Thank you, Lord Jesus. All right. Receive that anointing right now. Receive that anointing. There it is. You got it. Receive that anointing. There it is. You got it. Receive that anointing. There it is. You've got it. Receive right now. You've got it. 
Receive right now. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you. There it is. In the name of Jesus, the Spirit of the Lord is upon you right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God's anointing upon you. There it is. In the name of Jesus, fire, fire of God in these hands. Like hot coals from now on when you pray for the sick, the anointing of God upon you in Jesus' name. The anointing of God is upon you right now, Micah, in Jesus' name. There it is. In the name of Jesus. 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 There it is. In the name of Jesus. That's right. Don't fight it. Just yield to it. Let it flow through you. There it is. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The Spirit Lord is upon you right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. That's right. Don't fight it. Don't fight it. Yield to it. There it is. The anointing of God is upon you. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Receive right now. There it is. In the name of Jesus. That's right. That's right. Don't fight it. Don't fight it. Receive right now in the name of Jesus. That's right. Don't fight it, brother. Receive in Jesus' name. Receive in Jesus' name. Receive in Jesus' name. Receive right now. There it is. There it is. There it is. The anointing of God upon you right now. That's right. Fire in his hands. In the name of Jesus. 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 There it is. There it is. The anointing of God upon you right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Catch this, please. Thank you. The anointing of God's upon you right now. There it is. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The anointing of God upon you right now. Thank you, Jesus. There it is, Jerry. There it is. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus, for anointing. Praise you, Jesus, for anointing. You are Raphael. You got it. <laughs> Let these hands be like fire when you pray for the sick in Jesus' name. Yes, thank you, Father. You are Joanne. You got it. In the name of Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. There it is. You've got it. Praise you, Lord. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you right now. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you right now. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you right now. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you. The Spirit of God is upon you. Once you've been prayed for, you can go sit down. Thank you, Jesus. There it is. There it is. There it is. Amen and amen and amen and amen. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Praise God, praise God. Step up the platform. In the name of Jesus, there it is. In the name of Jesus, there it is. In the name of Jesus, there it is. Step up the platform. In the name of Jesus, you are the Spirit of the Lord is upon you. That's right, there it is. When you pray for the sick, these hands will burn and tingle in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, fire of God. In the name of Jesus, the fire of God. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, fire in these hands when you pray for the sick. There it is now. In Jesus' name. You got it. In the name of Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. 
In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Let fire burn in these hands when you pray for the sick. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. There it is. God is so good. You're doing a good job there on the keyboard. Thank you, Andre. In the name of Jesus, the Spirit of the Lord is on you right now. Healing. Anointing you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The anointing of God upon you, Dr. Paul. His hands burn, burn and tingle with fire when you pray for the sick. The anointing of God in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God's anointing upon you, son. There it is right now. In the name of Jesus. There it is. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise you. Dr. Michelle, the anointing of God upon you. Your hands will burn fire when you pray for the sick. And the anointing of God on you right now in these hands. Anointing of God upon your hands when you pray for the sick. In the name of Jesus, there it is. The anointing of God upon these hands when you pray for the sick, Catalina. Right now, there it is. There it is, you got it. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Praise God, praise God. Okay, now if you are here today and you are willing to pray for somebody today in the service, and let me coach you. If you are willing to pray for somebody in the service, and let me coach you and see how God heals through you, step up quickly and stand like this with your feet against the back of the platform. Come on right now, quickly. Last night... A bunch of people prayed for a bunch of people and they were all healed. It was just wonderful to see. Two different people had problems their eyes couldn't see properly. One eye couldn't see. The other one also a similar thing. And they were healed. So come on down. Yes. Yes, I'll pray for the people who are watching. Okay, all of you watching, we received some text, text messages. We received some text messages from different countries. They're wanting to receive. Okay, I would like you to sit down in your seat. All of you, I'm praying for you watching wherever you may be. Sit down in your seat, put your hands like that open on your lap. On your lap, like that. Okay? Now say this, I receive the healing anointing, the deliverance anointing to come upon me right here now in the name of Jesus. All right, it's flowing into you right now. Now you feel that anointing touch you. Your hands will start to tingle with fire, tingle and fire upon you right now. There it is, in the name of Jesus. The Spirit of God is touching you. Now lift your hands and say, I have it. Praise God. Praise the Lord. All right, now if you want to receive healing this morning, come up here quickly and stand in front of anybody that you want to, to pray for you. If you need healing, come and stand right up here quickly. All right. Just choose somebody you want, to, you want to pray for you. Now, don't start praying just yet. Wait a minute. Just wait a minute. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to ask them, what's going to happen when I pray for you? So let's go right here. 
No, don't pray for them just yet. Don't pray for them just yet. Follow me. Let me. Okay. Now, hang on a second. Don't say anything just yet, lady. Wait for me. Take the mic. Ask lady, what's her name? Vanessa. Your name is Vanessa? Uh-huh. Okay, Vanessa. Ask her, what's going to happen to her when I, when I pray for you? What's going to happen to you, Vanessa, when I pray for you? God's going to heal me. Okay, so I will receive it. I will receive it. Okay. So go ahead now and minister to her. What is your problem? I have rheumatoid arthritis. You have arthritis. Do you have pain in your body right now? Mm-hmm. Okay, tell that pain's going to go. The pain's going to go right now. So you're going to feel God's power you're go through feel you. You're going to feel God's power go through you right now. And the pain will melt away. And the pain will melt away. Do you believe that? Yes, I do. Okay. So I release the anointing. I release the anointing. To flow through you now. To flow through you now. And heal you. And heal you. There it is. There it is right now. In Jesus' name. There, there it is. Jesus so there it is. There it is. Jesus wants you well. There no, it no, is. Just, just saying that. There it there is. There it is. There it is. Okay. Now I tell you, you've got it. You're healed. You've got it. You're healed. Now put up your hands. And now thank him for you're healing. Thank God I'm healed. Thank you, I'm healed. Say, thank God I'm healed. Thank God I'm healed. Now test yourself out. Move around. Move away. Walk. Bend. Do some cartwheels. Okay. Now tell us that microphone, what happened to you? I felt better. Where's I'm the pain? Nowhere. Nowhere. So the arthritis left. What's your name, sister? What's your name? What's your name? Oh, Annette. <laughs> what's, what's your name? Annette. Annette. So, okay, Annette. You see that? The person yes. was healed. Yeah. Vanessa, right? Yes. Was healed. I'm healed. Received her healing. Isn't that wonderful? Thank you, Jesus. Okay, so who else is wanting healing? Over here. All right. Ask her her name. What's your name? Viviana. And Viviana, what is the situation? No, I'll yeah, tell Oscar what's wrong with it. Skin disorder in my hands. Okay, so Oscar now, what's going to happen when I pray for you? What's going to happen when I pray for you? I'm going to get healed. So I will receive my healing. So I receive my healing. I will receive. I will receive my healing. My healing. See, God has already healed you. So you're going to say, I will receive it. Amen. Say this, everybody. God has already healed me. Already healed. I'll receive it now. Fine. Don't say God's going to heal me because he already has. So I receive my healing. That's what we're talking I about. All right. Healing. I'll receive my healing now. I receive my healing now. All right. Go ahead and pray. So I release the healing power of God. I release the healing power to flow of through God your body to flow through your body and heal you right and now. Heal you right now. There it is. There it is. The anointing. There it is. The anointing. It's flowing. It's flowing through you. There Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Now. Lift your hands and say, thank you, I've got it. Thank you, I've got it. Praise thank God, you, I'm healed. Praise, the God. praise God, I'm healed. Okay. Amen. Did you want to examine yourself? <laughs> so what happened? I'm healed. Praise the Lord. Jesus. 